for a long time, this channel was built on ideas like this. Yes, don't get me wrong, I know, probably a couple years ago, I wouldn't have been talking about Sukuna himself, but what I mean by that is these fan fictiony ideas or these really like crazy crossover ideas with different animes has always had a special place in my heart. So that's why today we'll be talking about a more fan fictiony what if, and that would be what if Tanjiro was the reincarnation of Sukuna. Yes, some of you will probably immediately say and type in the comment section angry about this because oh Sukuna's not dead and this and that and that's completely fine but um back in the day we used to do uh quite a few fan fictions like this or ideas like this so i decided why not let's bring it to tondro himself and let's talk about what would have happened if he was the reincarnation of sakuna and uh basically what he would acquire because of this now for starters we would have a tondro that is drastically stronger than the original version of tondro that is well in the very beginning we know Sukuna is an absolute master strategist, an amazing manipulator, has immense knowledge, even if that is of sorcery, but obviously he has immense knowledge of vast other things as well because of how long he lived. And on top of that, he has just immense strength, immense speed, reflexes, and, and such. Now, with that said, I won't be necessarily bringing... Um, cursed energy and all of that into this world what i'm going to be doing is kind of taking a page out of what a lot of people do with reincarnations and kind of give them um kind of abilities slash kind of inspiration from the past reincarnation not necessarily give them the the one for one powers of these characters i mean you could even look at um more or less avatar the last airbender I mean, he doesn't necessarily have the the one specific powers of all of the reincarnations. I mean, they literally will have a different starting element every every single time. So that's kind of where we're going to be taking this in regards of Tanjiro being the reincarnation of Sukuna. Now, if we're talking about the very beginning of Demon Slayer, the very beginning of Demon Slayer is going to be very simple. I mean, we're talking about someone who will most likely still watch his family pass away, unfortunately, or kind of come across his family that has passed away. Now, with that said, he would come back to his sister Nezuko, and I feel like this version of Tanjiro would have a greater understanding of what's happening and what's occurring, and that his sister is a demon. In terms of the fight against Nezuko, it would be far easier in terms of him being able to fend her off, because he already has superhuman-like strength, and also insane speed and also reflexes. Now, when I'm talking about insane, I know that's not necessarily a quantifiable um, kind of description. But at the same time, it's more or less me telling telling you that his speed, his reflexes, and also his strength are all superhuman. Not to the, maybe not to the length of a full-powered Sukuna or anything like that. Because, I mean, this is a version of Tanjiro who has not trained and has not worked hard at all so far. But in terms of human level strength, he is definitely higher on that scale. And this is a just awakened demon Nezuko. So I could see him being able to fend her off relatively easily. And she, or he actually fends her off just based on his hand-to-hand -hand combat for a great deal of time. Eventually, Giyu Tomioka would arrive, and this would make it so Giyu would go for the killing blow on Nezuko, but Tanjiro would look to actually strike with Giyu with his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, and he's a very gifted hand-to-hand -hand combat actually user because of being the reincarnation of Sukuna. Now, he's not elite at it, he's very skilled because he's kind of like a prodigy at this point, but he's able to at least get the up of the the kind of upper hand on Giyu for the time being, stopping him from killing Nezuko and then eventually explaining what he sees from Nezuko and Nezuko showing that she has human kind of um, reactions in terms of his own or her own brother. So this would actually allow Giyu Tomioka to decide, okay, I'm going to allow Nezuko to basically live and he. this is when he sends them off to Urokodaki. Now, with Tanjiro and Nezuko now meeting Urokodaki and fighting the Temple Demon, the Temple Demon doesn't necessarily even stand a chance, but Tanjiro also doesn't have a way of actually killing him. 
So that's kind of just a big stalemate, just like normal. But this time around, Tondro isn't anywhere near as hurt or doesn't even really get touched by the Temple Demon by any means. And with the help of Nezuko, it makes it a very easy fight. Now, the training with Urokodaki is where things begin to change drastically because this is when the immense strength, the, the reflexes, the speed, the, uh, the insane hand-to-hand um, -hand combat um, prowess that he has, the master strategist, and all of this knowledge that Tanjiro basically would have would begin to come into play. And his skill with a sword would be immensely, immensely increased because of these out of nowhere and seemingly inhu or inhuman like um, abilities that would appear he would be capable of basically being able to um, cut through things at long range both close and long range obviously using cleave and he would be able to use something known as dismantle base basically using cleave and dismantle um, as a way of a uh, basically swordsmanship and it basically is based around the adjustment of attack power and normally it is based around the enemy's cursed energy level and the toughness to cut them down in one swoop but this version is more or less the toughness of skin of demons and or other opponents so this would definitely benefit him cleave and dismantle giving him the ability to strike from long range as well and all of these things would massively massively help Tanjiro and he'll gain more and more abilities as they go along as long as they fit the the quote-unquote world or the situation at hand because obviously he doesn't have um cursed energy and you could argue maybe oh we can give him re uh, reverse curse technique allowing him to more or less regenerate but that's not necessarily what we're going to do we're going to give him a slight version of it that allows him to regenerate passively but other than that he's not going to have anything to the level of a full-on reverse curse technique um now with that said tondra would finish his training with urokodaki even training with the spirits of sabito and makomo and these spirits or these basically training partners that he'll have more or less show that Tanjiro is levels above even them or really a lot of people that he's going to face very soon. I mean, Tanjiro is a, ba a basic prodigy, a master of hand-to-hand -hand combat, and this would trickle down to his use of swordsmanship. You could even make the argument that maybe he swaps out his sword for something more practical for himself in terms of his hand-to-hand -hand combat. Maybe some sort of um, claw like um, like things or maybe some sort of Nietzsche ring sharp edged brass knuckles this would allow him to basically use his hand-to-hand -hand combat a lot more fluidly but even if you think oh well he'll still use a sword or Nietzsche ring blade in the near future I could still see him utilizing the Nietzsche ring blade um, very very efficiently way better than the original Tanjiro because of his more or less prodigy like abilities and his ability to master hand-to-hand -hand combat very very quickly which which like i said would trickle down to his ability to utilize a sword now as we continue on toward the final selection the hand demon is no problem and frankly the final selection itself and a lot of the earlier earlier off missions are very very easy now hand demon very very simple and he's able to cut through even even at long range he'd be able to cut through the hand demon and his neck being able to slice him up into little pieces now leading off until basically after the final selection going into uh the whole kidnappers uh bog arc we're talking about a swamp demon that is very quick and more or less can use a teleporting factor or kind of these little portals and a duplication um, factor as well but these things are not going to be strong enough or fast enough frankly for Tondro in this version who's utilizing water breathing but also utilizing his natural speed strength and just natural ability to keep up with these demons very easily I mean like I said this version of Tondro is more or less superhuman so he's able to keep up with them very easily now, this would more or less lead us to when he first encounters Muzon, and this is when things 
definitely shake up because I could see things being pretty interesting with Muzan here this time around, even more so this time around. Because, of course, Muzan would send the normal people or the normal demons after Tantro, but Muzan in this version could actually see a version of Tantro that would scare him, like, even more. Because, yes, he could see Yurichi because of the earrings and the way his um, the, the scar on his face looks, but I think he would see things even deeper than that. Maybe see a version or kind of this version of a monster that was only rumored about a monster that was once alive maybe thousands of years ago something moves on himself never truly saw but only heard rumors about and it seems like tondro himself is the reincarnation of that monster being that of sukuna and this would terrify muzan i mean he's only heard stories but sometimes personal conflict is not as bad as a story when you hear stories of a monster stories of something that you would hope just never existed but when you start connecting the dots and this kid reminds you a lot of those stories or gives you or your blood begins to boil based around those stories around this person specifically i mean i can see him fearing both yorichi and also the reincarnation of sakuna even more than the original um, and this would lead to Muzan being very, 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 very threatened by Tanjiro um, to the point that maybe he even sends some extra demons on top of the other two that he normally sends. But let's be honest, there is no way for Muzan to necessarily scale the strength that Tanjiro currently has. So when he sends those demons, yes, they are strong. They are pretty comparable. But to, to Tanjiro himself, they are not comparable. And actually, the fight is pretty much a lot easier because of those long range cleave attacks that he has because a lot of these um or a lot of the the two demons that are going to fight him more or less are based around long ranged attacks and basically distance management so this this whole cleave and dismantle would allow him to strike them very easily without even needing to close the distance necessarily which was definitely an issue in the first fight but even with the issues of the first fight this tondro is not the same tondro that first that fight originally had so even without cleave and dismantle just the fact that his strength speed his reflexes are so much better in this version would, uh, would allow him to close that distance even if he couldn't use cleave and dismantle now to go on to the very next arc which would be the mansion after he meets zenny too and stuff like that remember this version of tanjiro would be probably a little bit more rowdy and a little bit more um I guess rowdy is not the best word for it, but a little bit more serious, especially to, to seeing this um, from Zenitsu. Yes, he is still the nice person he is because, I mean, he was raised properly, raised by good people and so on. But he still has that that grittiness that um, more or less Sukuna would kind of transfer off to him. And this would lead to him basically lecturing Zenitsu and getting really, really mad at Zenitsu during this time. But that's not super important to the story necessarily. But this would lead us to um, the mansion, of course. And he would take on Kyogai. And Kyogai is um, someone that is going to be somewhat difficult. I mean, I think this is something that Tanjiro not necessarily... Um, even the original Tanjiro had a little bit of struggle with. Just because of how different his powers and how different everything was. I mean, this was a giant speed jump um from normal but like i said cleveland dismantle drastically helps tondro in this version especially because of his his usage of the distance and yes i did give him superhuman like um like strength and speed and stuff like that from the beginning but but that's still cleveland dismantle would still benefit massively for these kind of long distance kind of close the gap encounters that Kyogai literally is. Kyogai is specifically that type of encounter. So that would help quite a bit. And as always, he would, after defeating Kyogai at least, he would inject the uh, syringe and take the blood out. And I know I skipped over that, but that's something that will always happen as long as Nezuko is a demon. And throughout this time, I mean, or throughout the man whole mansion arc, it's a very simple arc, especially when we go outside and Anosuke actually takes on Tanjiro, which they would actually throw hands, like actual fists, and 
I'm going to be honest, Anosuke would get beat senseless like a drum if he tries to throw hands with this version of Tanjiro. Because this version of Tanjiro is so skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat, way better than the brutish, kind of like unorthodox style that um, Inosuke would present. And it would be very easy for Tanjiro to take someone out like that. He just wouldn't necessarily even stand a chance. Now, to continue on, they all three eventually go on a journey together, get some rest, and then head off to more or less take on Rui. Now, this is where things um, are normally pretty challenging because Rui has a giant group of people and Tondro, um, could you could make the argument that he's not as um, informed in terms of, in terms of basically demons and, and such. But he would have a pretty decent time taking on some of these things just because he probably would be able to slice through the strings that are attached to the demon slayers and also slice through the neck of um, the father demon. Now, this would more or less be able to defeat the father demon and also be able to defeat some of these other demons that he normally doesn't take on in the first place would give them a chance or give them a better chance against Rui. But the fact is... Tanjiro's abilities like at face value are pretty damn strong and his ability to like I said cleave and dismantle would allow him to more or less strike Rui down very very quickly um, not defeating him but strike him down to keep him at bay from actually utilizing um, the closing distance that Rui wants to get to um, with his with his own blood demon art right but this would obviously um kind of stretch the boundary of how strong Tondro truly is in this version like I said I did scale him down quite a bit like we're not just giving him cursed energy and so on that would be crazy how strong he would be but you'll see how OP he quickly gets especially after this fight but I will say Rui would put up quite a good fight but the good part is he would have Anosuke and Nezuko helping him in this in in this regard because Anosuke isn't completely knocked out and completely out of commission and he has Nezuko on top of that it would make the fight a little bit more comparable we know normally Nezuko and Tanjiro together they ended up they ended up losing in in a technical sense and they would definitely win but I could see Tondro actually being hurt in this regard. I mean, he would not go unscathed. So in this version, he actually would need the rehabilitation arc. I can see maybe him taking of quite a few kind of cuts and quite a few like, you know, actual puncture wounds um, throughout this time. Because at the end of the day, he might be a little bit or like a good little bit faster and stuff like that. But Rui would also start a lot quicker. And we know that it... It really he or he really needed the transfer into sun breathing to truly help against Rui and once he was do once he does that he'll definitely be able to take Rui down but this is the first time he'll actually be able to show off his ability to actually slightly regenerate which would always be a beneficial uh, a beneficial action and they all three would eventually defeat Rui which would be an oppressive feat especially when Giyu just arrives after the fight is finished and they clean up, you know, just like they normally would, um, retrieving both Tondro and Nezuko. And, of course, we get the whole um, Hashiras wondering if they should kill Nezuko and banish Tondro or kill, or kill Tondro and so on. But quickly, they would decide against it, especially after seeing Tondro speed blitz um, the Wind Hashira. And, of course, the Wind Hashira wasn't prepared for this at all. I mean, he didn't think Tondro would be that fast at all. But quickly, Tondra would get on him and actually hurt him pretty bad. And the Wind Hashira would take him a little bit more seriously. But luckily, um, Ubi Ashiki would arrive and get him all to stop. Eventually, everybody would be fine. And it would be decided that Nezuko could stay. And Tondra is, is good to go and so on. And this is when the re rehabilitation training truly begins. And this is where things actually get very, very easy. And... You may be thinking, oh, well, I mean, like, it seems like you're balancing it or not giving him a bunch of abilities so that it's somewhat balanced. But even with the abilities that I give him, I've said this before, if you start Tondro at a higher floor, it does make things uh, a little bit awkward, especially for some of the fights. Because training in Demon Slayer 
actually has massive, massive benefits. I mean, we see Tanjiro um, more or less struggle with someone like Rui in the original canon and then train up and actually go head to head with someone like Enmu who is way stronger or at least way, yeah, way stronger than Rui because he got injected with a ton of Muzan blood after all of the others, um, the other lower moons were basically killed by Muzan. And this Enmu is a pretty strong foe. And yes, you could make the argument that he did spread out his blood throughout the, um, the whole train. And yes, that's kind of in the same boat of what Rui did with his family. But Enmu was still very powerful. And this version of Enmu would not stand a a chance against this version of Tanjiro because after the training the real rehabilitation training he would learn concentration breathing constant giving him an extra layer to his regeneration because of you know when you breathe uh, of a certain way that you can actually kind of heal up or basically um, seal wounds and so on and on top of that concentration breathing constant allows him to be a lot quicker a lot faster um a lot stronger and this just adds on to his superhuman like strength speed and reflexes and he's able to pick up on a ton of techniques very quickly and that would include his ability to use sun breathing he would be able to utilize sun breathing very very earlier on or very early on just like without even trying because of his master of hand-to-hand -hand combat and his ability to be extremely extremely intelligent and on top of that being just a flat-out prodigy in terms of the the process of learning different combat styles and this would lead him to the Enmu fight, killing Enmu very easily. And frankly, I think we all want to know what's happening next. And that would be the appearance of Akaza. And this is something that is pretty interesting. Because this is where things I could conceivably seeing um, things change. Because how much of a threat does Muzan see Tanjiro as? He sends Akaza because he thinks Tanjiro is a massive threat. But do you think he could even send another demon because of that? And this is where things get real, real sketchy. Because depending on how much Muzan fears Tanjiro, we could see him send Akaza and then maybe even someone else. Maybe even someone like Gyoko or Hantengu or maybe even someone above Akaza. Or maybe you replace Akaza and he sends someone like Kokoshibo. And he basically entices Kokushibo to go over there because he learns that, well, this might be the reincarnation of Yorichi. Um, and of course, this isn't necessarily true, but of course, he could be enticed by the idea that he is or could be fighting a monster of the past. And this could entice Kokushibo to go test his blade against Tanjiro and Rengoku. Now, that would be a fight for the ages now i'm gonna be honest this version of tondro may be vastly stronger than his canon version to this point but a fight between um kokushibo and also tondro and rengoku would be one that is extremely difficult for rengoku and tondro and no that would be just no matter the case now with that said do i ever see muzan actually doing that probably not do I think Rengoku and Tanjiro could actually take out Ko Kokushibo? Probably not. Not at this point. Now, I know I talk about how Tanjiro excelled even further and actually got vastly stronger, which is 100% the truth, but there's only to or only a certain amount of strength you can truly get to in that short amount of time, and he didn't get the strength to eclipse someone like Kokoshibo, who was taking on multiples of Hashira and even more on top of that. And Kokoshibo showed that he was super, super powerful, taking on the Wind Hashira, Giome, Mutaro, and so on throughout that fight, which was a crazy feat in itself. So I don't think if Kokoshibo did arrive, I mean, I don't think it would go too well. Now, with that said, I do see him sending Akaza. And if he does send Akaza, I can see this fight being really close and maybe even leaning toward the favor of the Demon Slayers. Especially when he starts using Sun Breathing and for the majority of the time, Tanjiro would more or less be able to keep up with um, Akaza because of his 
knowledge of hand-to-hand -hand combat and his ability to kind of see through the combat that Akaza is utilizing. And there's a chance that he they massively wound Akaza or maybe even get to the point that they kill him. That's at least that's what I think. But as always, he Akaza could just choose to run away and his regeneration is pretty insane. And I could see that Tanjiro's um, sun breathing still be at a um, a lower level. Yes, he can use it on command and use it quite a bit, but he doesn't have like all the forms of sun breathing like he would at the end of the, the story. But even if you would say that Akaza would live and escape, I don't see Rengoku actually dying, which is a huge benefit for the future. And this would then kind of lead them or lead all of them down the path of... Um, more or less these rest of these fights are vastly easier and akaza kind of is that temple or the top of the food chain at least to a certain extent comparing compared to these next couple fights i mean we have the daki gyutro fights but tanjiro is already exceedingly stronger than both tengen and the demons that they face so that fight would be a lot easier and you could even make the same argument for when they take on hantengu um, we know that um, Mutro took on Gyoko on his own, so that wouldn't change at all. I mean, Tanjiro would, would still easily awaken the Demon Slayer mark, even though he isn't necessarily um, threatened by anything. Uh, he would 100% awaken it just for the sole sake of the kind of the level of strength that he was getting to. And in turn, Mutro could still beat Gyoko. And in turn, when they face Hantengu, basically in a group with Genya, Nezuko, Tanjiro, and Mutsuri, that fight is vastly easier. And I think most of you are wondering, I mean, how would this affect the Infinity Castle? But before we can even talk about the Infinity Castle, we have to talk about the Hashira training arc, which is where we'll see Tanjiro's strength completely peak, completely peak because of how much training they get and how drastically beneficial that training is. This would lead them to easily be able to 2v1 Akaza. And Tantro may even have the, the chance to help the other people that are there. Maybe even helping with Doma or maybe even helping with Kokoshibo. And his strength would be absolutely off the charts to this point. Because like I said, with proper training, especially with the proper people, you can see him maybe even awaken even more powers that lay dormant based on him being the reincarnation of Muzan, maybe actually acquiring some techniques that Muzan himself would acquire from other people, kind of like the dimensional slash or or stuff like that. Some some of the more powerful things that, that Sukuna has more or less um, within his arsenal. And yes, I could see the end of this going exactly or not exactly but in the favor of the demon slayers i think that throughout the entire story there was there would be no doubt on that regard because i mean tandro would easily be able to more or less defeat muzan with the help of the other demon slayers with everybody awakening their demon slayer marks and if he's able to help against kokoshibo or doma we're also dealing with a lot healthier and maybe even some other demon slayers still being alive and you know because we do get a couple people that die within this first infinity castle arc and the sunrise or the countdown to the sunrise would be um where where everybody would be somewhat healthy enough to then now take on Muzan, especially a Muzan that is dwindling because of the cure that is within him, leading them to more or less the defeat of Muzan Kibutsuchi. With all that said, I hope you all enjoyed the video. That is the end of What If Tondra Was the Reincarnation of Sukuna. Um, if you enjoyed, show some love, leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below. If y'all want to see me actually do like a full on what if based like more or less a full on fan fiction in the future um back how i used to do in the past um make sure to let me know in the comment section below if enough people say that they want it um i will definitely consider doing it and uh yeah that's all i gotta say i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope all y'all have an amazing day later